Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? In this video I make a travel chessboard that folds up and is held together with magnets. I actually made the board two years ago during the height of COVID and when I was reviewing the video footage I was surprised by how many things have evolved in the last two years both in my workshop and in my processes. So I'll point some of those things out as we go along. So let's get started. <music> This piece of curly maple is wider than my 8 inch jointer, so I'm going to start by jointing the edge to get a nice straight edge, and then I'll run it through my table saw to take off a strip. I wouldn't normally run a large board like this through the jointer because it's quite difficult to handle, but I'm doing it to get just one nice long strip that I can use for edge bending, and then I'll cut the board down to a shorter length and joint it again. Now I'm running it through the table saw to get that one strip that I can use for the edge bending. Nowadays I would use my large bandsaw for this, but two years ago I didn't even have the Laguna 18 inch bandsaw. I had ordered it, but it had not arrived yet. I also had not made my miter saw station yet, so I'm using my rigid sliding compound miter saw, which I really like, but I don't use it in my workshop anymore. I've switched to a delta saw because it doesn't require any room at the back for the sliding rails. Now that I have a more manageable length, I will joint the face and one of the edges. That door that's behind my jointer is no longer there. I removed it last year and re-drywalled. My office is on the other side of that wall and I was getting scared of snakes that would occasionally crawl in under the door and surprise me in the morning. The curly maple is going to be used for the chessboard squares, and then I have a couple of pieces of sapile that are going to be used for the dark squares as well as the frame that goes around the board. Next I'll plane out the boards down to be the same thickness. Next on my table saw, I'll cut all the boards to be the appropriate width to get two and a quarter inch squares and also for the frame. I'll cut the curly maple and sapile into 20 inch lengths so that I can glue them up for the first glue up for the chessboard squares.
two years ago, I didn't have the clamping fixtures that I use for clamping my chessboards nowadays. So it was more challenging to get this clamp together and to ensure that it remains flat. Now I'll cut these into two and a quarter inch widths and prepare for the second glue up. You might think that I would glue up the entire chessboard at this point and then cut it in half, but that would result in the two rows of squares in the middle not being square anymore because the blade would take about a sixteenth of an inch off each side. So I'm gluing up four rows and then I'll glue up the other four rows. I'm going to fit the frame onto the chessboard with tongue and groove joinery, so I'm cutting the tongue on the frame pieces now. Now I'm cutting the groove in the chessboard on three sides. The reason I'm not using plywood for this type of a chessboard is because the middle will be exposed when it's separated. So I'm using solid wood all the way through. Next I'll cut a groove in the outside edge of the frame pieces and this is to hold the edge banding. I flip the board around and make a second cut and that ensures that the groove is always in the center of the board. The chessboard is going to have a brass border around the playing field, so I'm going to cut a rabbit in the frame pieces to hold the brass, and I want to make sure that I don't cut too deep or too wide, so I will sneak up on the fit. Each time I make a pass, I test for the fit to make sure that the brass is flush with the edge of the frame, and if it's not, I'll adjust the fence inward.
Here I'm sanding the brass to make sure that it will adhere well to the glue. Nowadays I would use a random orbit sander to sand the brass very quickly. Here I'm using epoxy to glue in the brass and that's something I would not do anymore. It's not that I don't like epoxy, it has its uses and I'll be using it later on in this video, but it's not ideal for gluing in brass because it takes so long to cure and it's a little bit messy to handle. So nowadays I would use CA glue to glue in the brass because it's almost instant and I don't, ha I don't have to wait eight hours to continue working. You can see with the epoxy, I have to clamp it with tape and let it sit for several hours. Whereas with CA glue, there's no clamping required because of the accelerator. It just bonds instantly. After the epoxy cured overnight, now I'm going to glue in the edge banding. And after the glue is dried, I will trim off the excess edge bending. Next I'll work on the mitered corners and then I'll test the fit around the board. And for the two short pieces that go midway to the center of the board, I'll cut those off with a 90 degree angle using my chop saw. I'll use mortise and tenon joinery for the corners of the chessboard frame. So I'm marking the positions of the tenons and then I'll go cut the mortises with my router. Now I'll glue up the frame on both halves of the chessboard and let it cure overnight. I have a 90 degree V-bit in the CNC router and that's going to put a 45 degree bevel between each of the squares and between the squares and the brass border around the outside edge.
The two halves of the board are gonna be held together with rare earth magnets. So I'm marking the center of each magnet and then I'll drill the holes with a Forstner bit. I'm lightly sanding the surface of each magnet to ensure a good bond, and then I'll glue them in place with CA glue. I'm keeping the magnets in a stack to make sure that I orient them properly. So the three magnets on one half are going top down and then I'll flip the stack over and put the remaining three in the other way around. So the magnets will attract rather than repel each other. And then I'm going to put some magnets on the bottom as well, and that way when the board is folded, it will hold together. Now with a 30 degree V bit, I'm carving the algebraic notation and I'll fill it with black epoxy. And since there's a 45 degree bevel on the brass, I need to use sandpaper to sand out the marks left by the router bit. And then I'll do a final sanding with 320 grit sandpaper. You may have difficulty keeping track of what sanding disc you have after you've used it a few times because the pre-printed sanding grit number will wear off pretty quickly. So I like to write the grit number with a Sharpie in the middle of the disc and that way it remains visible for its lifetime. And now I'm using this Merlon pad to polish the brass. That's equivalent to using 1500 grit sandpaper.
This is when the board starts to really look nice. And this is only water that I'm rubbing onto the board to help raise the grain. And then I'll do a final sanding before I apply the finish. The client wanted to have his logo on the bottom of the board, so I'm burning that in with my laser. It's always a little scary for me to do that because you don't get a second chance. If you make a mistake with the laser, you've got to sand it completely out and try again. And now I'm applying a coat of de-waxed shellac, and then I'll take it outside to spray with pre-catalyzed lacquer. And now to get a nice matte finish, I'm using that same Merlon pad underneath my random orbit sander to dull down the finish. So I gotta ask, would you make it?